All right, everybody, I'm back here with another video. And in this video here, I'm going to talk about something that we really need to take heed to. All right. Um, before I get started on this lesson, I want you to know for those who do watch my videos is that I like to use scripture because I want you to know what the Bible says. See, a lot of people have gotten off scripture. Many people, they go preaching and talking about things and, and you know, without opening up the Bible. But it's important that when your heart is genuine towards God, you want to know what his word has to say. And I encourage you to stay implanted in the word of God and don't just listen to people just talking on and running their mouths and teaching when, you know, when they not even opening up scripture so you can even verify those things. So all you need to just go back and, you know, and study, you know, and the only way you're going to study is you got to open up the Bible. So the Bible says, Paul told Timothy, study to show yourself approved. So go back in the Bible and study what's being taught so that therefore you can verify because it's a lot of false doctrine. It's a lot of false teachers out here. All right. So other than that, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be talking about who you living for. Are you living for yourself or are you living for Jesus? Now, it's very important that you pay attention to these scriptures because, um, you know, this has a lot to do with our salvation. It's a salvation issue, and I want you to listen. All right, so in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, at verse number 37, Jesus said this. He says, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Jesus said, if you love your, even your father and your mother more than you love him, he said, you're not worthy of him. He says, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Even your own children, if you love them more than him, you're not worthy of them. He says, and he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. So those who don't take after their cross, well, the cross symbolizes death. Jesus died on the cross. He carried his cross. He he carried the cross so he can go be crucified. All right. So if you don't, he as he says, if you don't take, if you take not his cross, if you don't take your cross and follow after him, see, don't follow nobody else. Don't follow the world. Follow after him. He says you're not worthy of him. Verse 39, he says, he that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. So what he's trying to say is that if you find your life, you shall lose it. That means if you want to keep your life, if you want to keep your life the way it is, you don't want to come after him. And when you come after him, it's like you you doing what he say. All right? It's all about following the words of Jesus and what God has taught. All right, so he that findeth his life, he says, shall lose it. So if you want to keep your life, you don't want to um, take up your cross and follow after him. He said, you, and you want to keep your life the way it is. You want to keep everything about your life, no matter how you living, no matter even if it's contrary. If you want to keep that, if you don't want to give it up for him. He says, you shall lose it. But then he also says, he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. So if you are willing to lose your life, give up your life, even giving up sinful desires, all right, giving up anything that's in your life that's contrary to God's will, he says, if you're willing to give it up for me, for my sake, he says, you will find it. So if you want e eternal life, you want everlasting life, you have to be willing to lose your life in order to obtain that life. And, and many people may not agree with that, may not like it, but the Lord is our judge. All right, we all going to die and check out this earth one day unless Christ uh, returns to get us. But otherwise, we all got to check out. So only the only thing that matters is what he say. If he say you got to lose your life in order to gain it, well, he's only telling you something that's for the best of your benefit. Let's look at Mark chapter 8, start reading at verse 34. And when he had called the people unto him, with his disciples also, he said unto them. Now, look at what Jesus is going to teach the people and his disciples. He says, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So if you want to come after Jesus, you want to receive eternal life because he is eternal life. Eternal life, God placed in Jesus. So he says, whosoever will come out, come after me, he says, let him deny himself. So you have to be willing to deny yourself. I have to be willing to deny myself if I want to come after him. And he says, and he says, so whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So we have to take up our cross and we have to follow Jesus. 
not follow the way that this world is. Don't follow the celebrities. Don't follow the entertainers, but follow him. He says, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's sake shall save it. So if you want to save your life, as I said, if you, if you don't want to give up your life, you want to keep your life, you want to save it, he says you're going to lose it. But if you're willing to lose your life, if you lose your life, and you actually have to lose your life for his sake and for the gospel's sake, he says you shall save it. And then um, verse 36, he says, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So keeping your own life, you know, you may want to keep those things that that causes you to gain. See, in, in your gang is ungodly. So whatever it is about your life is not right. But even if what you're doing is causing you to gain a lot, he says that, well, what benefit is that? If you keep, if you keep your life, keep um, gaining whatever you're gaining and not willing to lose your life, well, even if it caused you to gain the whole world, if you can't lose your life for his sake, he says, I mean, you're going to lose it. So what can you give in exchange for your soul? No matter how much how much gain you may gain in this life, you can give nothing in exchange for your soul. Um, then in verse 37, he says, oh, what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? Nothing. So no matter what you gain, no matter if you gain the whole world, he says, uh, you will lose your soul. If you're not willing to lose it for him. So what do you value more? Do you value eternal life? Or do you value keeping your life on this earth? Because you know you're going to die. These bodies won't live forever. So what do you value more? Do you value your eternal destiny? Or do you value your life right now on earth? Matthew chapter 22. Let's read that. In fact, Jesus said this. He says, fear not man who kill the body, but rather fear him who can destroy both the body and the soul in hell. So that lets you know that men on this earth are not to be feared. The only one you're supposed to fear is the one who has the power to destroy your body and your soul in hell. So with that being said, you don't want to play uh, with your salvation. Why? Because God is the one who has power over our soul. Alright. Matthew chapter 22 at verse number 37 Jesus said unto him Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. So loving God with our everything is the first and the greatest commandment that is given. We should love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind. And so when we love God like that, we're going to value we're going to value um those things of God. We're going to value God above ourselves. Are we living for Jesus or are we living for ourselves? Are we living for God or are we living for ourselves? Philippians chapter 1 the Apostle Paul, he showed and demonstrated who he valued above himself. Philippians chapter 1 verse 18 says, What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. He rejoiced that Christ was being preached, not himself. So he rejoiced in that. Verse 20 says, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. So Paul, my frame, was that Christ would be would be uh, magnified, exalted through him, through his body, whether he was alive by his life by his lifestyle or by his death. He wanted Christ to get the glory. And he says, verse 21, 
For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. So to, to him, to live was for Christ. And to die, he said, that's gain because he knew what he was choosing, what he was getting out of that. And let's look at um, verse 22. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I what not. For I, I am in a strait betwixt two. Or I'm in a strait between two, he says, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. So Paul knew that being with Christ was far better. So he was undecided. Should he stay or should he depart? He say, I decide like he desired to depart. He desired to be with Christ. That's what his desire was. And that's what our desires need to be. In verse 24, he said, nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Why? Because he know they needed direction. They needed instruction. Revelation chapter 3 verse 16 talks of, you know, uh, Jesus talks to the church and talks about how they are lukewarm. But being lukewarm, he says that he'll spit them out their mouth. Because we can't be lukewarm with God. We got to be all about him or don't be for him at all. We can't be in the middle. We can't be about ourselves and about the Lord. It's either we going to um, love one more and love the other one less. Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 said no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You can't serve both Jesus and the Father and yourself. You can't serve God and yourself. You can't serve Jesus and yourself. You can't do that. You're going to love one more than the other. You're going to love one, you're going to hate the other. You're going to hold to one, and you're going to not hold to the other one as much, you know? So we can't we can't serve two masters. It's either you're going, you're going to uh, put your all into one, or, I mean, well, that's exactly what you're going to do. You can't say, well, I'm going to serve Jesus, but I'm going to still please myself, because, no, you're going to find yourself pleasing yourself and not pleasing Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 21 Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. You just can't do it. So you're going to have to choose who you're going to serve. You're going to serve yourself or you're going to serve Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. The mind of Christ Jesus is this. Remember when he was, it was time for him to get ready to die and he prayed to the father that that cup would pass from him. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. See, he prioritized God's will over his will. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Meaning yours be done, God. Even though I'm asking for this, in the end, let your will be done, not my will. He was willing to lose his life for God's sake. And just like we have to be willing to lose our life for his sake as well. Whether that's physical or just losing your life, just losing the things of this life or losing people on this life, losing our loved ones. Remember, Jesus said he, come to, he didn't come to bring peace but a sword. So even if you accepting Jesus, living for Jesus, caused you to lose your family members being a part of your life, well, you got to be willing to take that for him. We can't love people more than we love him. Remember, if you love father, mother, son, or daughter, husband, or wife more than him, you're not worthy of him. All right? Luke chapter 22, verse 42. Uh, remember, Jesus said, Father, if thou be willing, to remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not, in, not my will, but thine be done. So Jesus prioritized the Father's will uh, above his own. Luke 11, verse 23. Jesus says, he that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. So by default, if you're not with Jesus, he says, by default, you are against him. So if you're not with him, automatically you're against him. If you don't gather with him, he says, you scatters. And you don't want to be one that scatters, you want to gather with the Lord. That way, when he gather up, all the people from around the earth, 
he could take you to be with him. So be a part of that gathering. Um, in the book of Acts chapter 20, let me show you something here. In the book of Acts, let's go to that chapter 20. At verse number 24, it says, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself. See, he didn't count his life dear to Paul. He didn't count his life dear unto himself. He says, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So Paul did not count his life dear unto himself. He was willing to give up his life for the sake of Jesus and for the gospel's sake. All right. So again, he says, but none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So he was all about doing God's will. He wanted to do what Jesus called him to do. So he didn't count his life dear unto himself. He, was, he lost his life for Jesus' sake. So he's worthy of it. Let's look at... Uh, Matthew 19, let me show you something here in verse 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee, and what shall we have therefore? Thereof, therefore? So, Jesus, so Peter says that they forsook all. See, they gave up everything, and they followed Jesus. Remember, Jesus said, If you take up, not up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of it. So Peter said, well, we forsaken all and follow thee. And what shall we have therefore? Now look at what Jesus said. Look how he responded. And Jesus said unto them, truly or verily, I say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the son of man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging 12 tribes of Israel. So now he, he making them judges. But then also he says, and everyone that, now this pertains to everybody else, and everyone that have forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, that mean all your possessions, whatever you own, you forsake it. He says, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. So, if you're willing to give up, everything for him if you have to give it up give it up so that you can receive a hundredfold and everlasting life everlasting life is more important than any possession we can possess on this earth See, people want to be rich today have money have things have possessions today but what about in the end time well what about in the ages to come what about when you meet the lord where is your treasure? Is your treasure on earth or is your treasure in heaven? The Bible says store up your treasure in heaven, not on earth. Luke chapter 5, verse 11. And when they had brought their ships and land, they forsook all and followed him. See, they were willing, willing to forsake all and follow after Jesus. They forsook all. I'm just showing you some scriptures so I can show you where these men in the Bible, these apostles... They forsook all for the sake of Jesus because they valued Jesus more than they valued their own lives. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So he decided, I'm going to live my life by the faith of the Son of God who is the one that loved me and gave himself for me. And that should be our attitude. We should be willing to give up our life and live our life for the one that loved us and died for us. He died so that we could receive eternal life or else we was on our way to the lake of fire. The people was on the way to the lake of fire, but yet Christ, God, out of his love, sent his only begotten son who came here and died. So why wouldn't we want to live for God and live for his son, Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us? And he got the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So why would we not want to live for the one that gives us eternal life? 
and the one who have the power to send us to the lake of fire. And one more scripture I want to share with you is Philippians chapter 3. Uh, let's read starting in verse 14. Paul says, though I might also have confidence in the flesh. He says, if any other man thinketh that he had whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuted, persecuted the church, touching the righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. He says, but what things were gained to me, those I count lost for Christ. So Paul is just, just telling you about how he gained so much when he was uh, when, when he was one of them Jews and, and he was really zealous of the law. But he says those things that was gained to him, he counted as a loss. He was willing to give it up. And let's see why. He says, for Christ. He says, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. He was willing to give it up for Jesus. And then he goes on to say, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. So he was willing to give it up for the knowledge of Christ Jesus, his Lord. He says, and he says, um, For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb that I might win Christ. So he, he suffered loss for the sake of Jesus that he could count those things as done. Dung. That's boo-boo. That he might win Christ. He wanted Christ. He valued Christ more than he loved, more than he valued the things he had learned, more than he valued himself. He was willing to count that as a loss. He says that I might win Christ and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. So he wanted to know Christ. He wanted to take part in everything of Christ. He crucified with Christ. He wanted the fellowship of Jesus' suffering. We don't want the many people don't want the fellowship of Jesus suffering. We don't want to suffer. But he wanted to know the power of Jesus' resurrection, the fellowship. He wanted to share in the, the fellowship of Jesus' suffering. And he made himself conformable until his death. If by any means he said, I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which I am, for, for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. So that's what he followed. He wanted to apprehend for that which was of Christ Jesus. So he says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. He was willing to and did forget what was behind. And he says, and reaching forward unto those things which are before or meaning ahead. So he was willing to lose his life, lose everything for the sake of one eternal life with the Lord Jesus. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So are you living for self or are you living for Jesus? Consider that. Consider what who's that more valuable to you yourself your life everything you want everything you have obtained or is eternal life with the lord jesus something that you value more so what do you value more repent turn to jesus christ give up your life lose lose your life for his sake and the gospel's sake let's spread this love of god let's spread this gospel of salvation Let's spread the good news of Jesus Christ and let's live and give up our lives and call all of our life but dung for the sake of one to know Jesus. All right. So repent, get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I'll see you next video.